Hi, Bill Vales here, and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new show that we've been working on at LCTV. The name of the show is Your Backyard, and on Your Backyard, we're going to take you through all the conservation trails that are in Littleton, and our guide for this is going to be the Guide to Conservation Land of Littleton, Mass., and this book was put out by the Littleton Conservation Trust, written by Art Lazarus, a longtime Littleton resident and geologist. We're very excited about this show, and we'd like you to sit back, relax, and let's see where your backyard takes you today. Hi, Bill Vales here. Today we find ourselves at the Prouty Estate in Littleton. The Prouty Estate is a collection of uh, vintage, uh, of, of vintage uh, house and end out buildings. Probably goes back about 150 years. We even have a, a candle pin bowling alley here on the grounds, which is just, you can't get any more New England than candle pin bowling. Uh, the Prouty Estate is used as the headquarters. It used to be a private residence, but now it's used as the headquarters for the New England Forestry Foundation, also known as NEF. And uh, NEF's charter is to uh, maintain and educate people on the values of forest, forests within New England. And um, here they are right, right in uh, Littleton. Prouty consists of about 107 acres of woodland and some field which will eventually take us down to Long Lake. Some of the tree species on this property are very mature and in the category of specimen trees. They're, they're mature in stature. I'm looking around at some 130 foot Norway spruce uh, and they're labeled, which helps us understand what we're looking at. And we couldn't ask for a better day to do this, so let's go take a look at some of the features in Prouty. As we make our way up to the height of land on Prouty Estate, which is Wilderness Hill, there's a few things that I'd like to point out. Many of the tree specimens are labeled to help us understand uh, what it is we're looking at. For instance, this Norway spruce here, which probably is a good 130, 140 feet high, is a beautiful specimen tree. And we have these labels here that help us identify just what we're looking at. Uh, some other features that we see around the Prouty Estate are a large collection of stone walls, and there's a significant history with these stone walls that we're going to be talking about. So let's walk up to Wilderness Hill and see what else we can find. Well, as we come up uh, to the main entrance towards Wilderness Hill, we see that there's a gate here. And what that means is foot traffic only is allowed, so we need to walk around it. So now we're gonna proceed up to Wilderness. But first I'd like to show you here a great specimen of a tree, which is the Northern Catalpa also called the uh, cigar tree, and you can see it has a beautiful leaf, beautiful large leaf, but the name cigar tree is because of its beans or cigar-shaped fruit which uh, come from the tree. And uh, this is a beautiful specimen, uh, certainly over 100 feet tall, uh, and just one of many great specimen trees on the Prouty Estate. So let's continue up to Wilderness Hill. Okay, as we proceed up 
Wilderness Hill, we notice over here the chestnut orchard. And I'm sure you remember from a previous show that we had, we talked about the American chestnut tree and how a project is going on here at Prouty to restore the American chestnut tree. And here we have the orchard, uh, which will wind up being the American restoration chestnut as opposed to the American chestnut. But you can see that the orchard is uh, growing. It's turning a beautiful golden uh, color because of the fall. And uh, you can see over here, there's a couple tractors working there as part of the maintenance program of keeping the chestnut orchard clean and um, vibrant. So let's continue up. Okay, as we're going up to Wilderness Hill, I want to point out here um, a sample of one of these stone walls that's here. And you can see just how wide this stone wall is. The stone wall is probably a good eight feet wide. And this, I don't see stone walls this w width around here in Massachusetts. I tend to see them in northern New Hampshire. And this speaks to how much uh, rock was here and needed to be cleared from the fields. And uh, these, this stone wall will proceed all the way up to Wilderness Hill. And like most of the uh, debris that we see around here, we owe this to the, uh, to the last uh, glacier that was here during the Pleistocene period, around 12 to 14,000 years ago when it receded. But there's plenty of rock. And um, this, this stone wall is what is called a fitted wall in that it's more than just rocks piled up on one another. There was a little work done to fit these into aesthetically pleasing positions. So let's uh, continue up and um, see what else we can find. Okay, well, as we go up Wilderness Hill here, we're gonna stop right here for a moment, and you'll notice that this is Loop Trail. And the idea with the Loop Trail is we could go off to the left here, and that's gonna be a little more adventurous and take us up the back way to Wilderness Hill. Or if we stay on the main thoroughfare, that will also get us to Wilderness Hill or also Long Lake. But I'd like to show you here this plaque uh, that's dedicated to the Prouty Woods Community Forest. And it makes mention of the members of the Prouty family that were the uh, owners and caretakers of this property before it was turned over to the town and the New England Forestry Foundation. Well, we're working our way up to towards Wilderness Hill, passing a beautiful eastern white pine here that's labeled. Uh, but before going to Wilderness Hill, we're gonna hook a right turn here. And this right turn is gonna take us down to Long Lake. And where do you see this? This is one nice place. Okay, well, as we make our way down towards Long Lake, before going to Long Lake, I wanna point out here a tree called the sassafras tree. And this has a tag on it, so it'll help us identify it. A very distinct feature of the sassafras tree is the shape of the leaf. It's in a, uh, I, I kind of think of it as a three-fingered uh, sort of arrangement. Now, as the, as the sign says, it's a very hardy tree with aromatic roots, twigs, and bark. So, well, it smells like bark to me. Um, Sassafras at one time was used to make root beer, as well as other soft drinks. Um, but be on the lookout for this beautiful leaf. That's a sassafras. Okay, so now, as we go down towards Long Lake, and we're now actually on the southerly side of, of the Prouty Estate here. We see Long Lake boat ramp here. This was part of the private estate. And Long Lake is another glacial feature. This is a kettle pond. And Long Lake is part of the Assabet River, Sudbury River watershed. So again, this is on the southerly side. And you can see here 
the view to Hadawan Road. For all you Littleton folks, would be over here, and you can see it bordered by uh, a beautiful, beautiful set of uh, swamp maples and red maples, which uh, really take full color this time of year. It's absolutely spectacular out here. The, the water looks uh, clear. Just an absolutely beautiful day at Long Lake. Now, another thing I want to point out, as we've walked through this property and we'll continue to see when we go up to Wilderness Hill, uh, we continue to see stone walls. And these stone walls are, where they are is very useful for our understanding of how this land was used in the past. Because typically, stone walls were used to separate one field from another and also narrow collections of stone walls were made so you could lead uh, cattle or uh, sheep from one field to another in a controlled fashion. Now a mapping project of all the stone walls was done on Prouty about five or six years ago um, and I say that because I did that and we're going to show you a map of the stone walls and the the idea behind that is to understand some of the land usage of not just Prouty, but we're trying to join up these stone wall maps with stone wall maps that have been done by other people in town of Long Lake and also the Yap property. And we hope at some time we get stone wall maps of all of New England. Okay, over here on the left, we have the William A. King Education Center. And this building was dedicated to Bill King, who was a former president of the New England Forestry Foundation and played an instrumental ro role in getting thousands of acres under the stewardship of Neff. Uh, Bill just recently passed away. He was a good friend of mine. And um, uh, he, he loved the forest. He loved everything forest, from the mountains to the trees to birds. Uh, so this we affectionately know, known as the Wack House because it stands for William A. King. Okay, we're almost at the top here of Wilderness Hill and wait till you see the panoramic shot we're gonna get. Well, here we are at the height of land on Wilderness Hill at Prouty. This hill rises 170 feet uh, above sea level. And as you can see, we couldn't have picked a better day to, to come out here. I mean, this is New England at its finest. We see out here uh, a beautiful collection of red maples and the gold from the hickory trees and, and mountain ash. Uh, it, it's absolutely breathtaking. Uh, we see in the distance the vista from Wilderness Hill. We can see, uh, starting over here on my left, we, we can see Mount Wachusett, that's that large bump, and then to the right, further in the distance, is Mount Monadnock. And Mount Monadnock rises uh, to a height of uh, 3,165 feet. And that's the highest feature in this general area, and that's in uh, southern New Hampshire in the Jaffrey area. And there's pretty much between us and Mount Monadnock not, uh, nothing that's, that's really higher, and that area is known as a peneplain. So we get a beautiful view from Wilderness Hill out across this peneplain, looking towards the northwest, out to uh, Mount Monadnock, and then to the right of Mount Monadnock, we would see Mount Watadick. And this particular hill is, is one of many hills that tend to be in a east-west, aligned in an east-west direction. However, each particular hill is north-south, and this is known as a drumlin, and this is a, glacier drum, a glacial drumlin that was laid down by the glacier 12 to 15,000 uh, uh, years ago. And uh, the view is just absolutely spectacular. Um, this is one of the finest New England days 
uh, I, I, I can remember. It, it, uh, it explains to me why I go through the long winters in New England. Uh, it's for days like this in the fall. And one other thing I should mention about this hill and the collection of hills around here is that it separates two watersheds. And the watershed to our south is um, the Assabet River, Sudbury River watershed. And water would drain off this hill and other hills to the south towards Long Lake. And um, to the south would be to the Assabet Sudbury watershed. And any water draining from the north this way towards Beaver Brook would take us to the Merrimack watershed. So those are two significant watersheds in our area. And this hill uh, represents a divide between the drainage that goes to each shed, watershed. Absolutely beautiful day. And as beautiful a vista as we have here from 170 feet, we're going to be heading over to a, the highest point of land in Littleton, which is over in Oak Hill. And we're gonna get some beautiful views from Oak Hill looking more towards the east. So let's go over to Oak Hill. Okay, well, as promised, here we are at Oak Hill. We've just arrived here from the Prouty Estate. And Oak Hill is, uh, is a gem in uh, Littleton's conservation land. Uh, there's about six, uh, six miles of uh, marked trails through here. You can spend hours uh, walking around uh, Oak Hill. Uh, the two significant features, I mean, there's many, but the two dominant features here are Tophet's Chasm and Lookout Rock. Lookout Rock happens to be the highest point in Littleton, which is 508 feet above sea level. And when we get up there, assuming I can make it up there, I think we're going to get a, uh, a, a beautiful view. Tophis Chasm is a uh, chasm that's approximately 120 feet deep that was carved out during the glacial period when Lake Nashua overflowed and carved out the chasm. And we're going to take a look at that also. So let's go. Well, just as we enter the Oak Hill land, we, we come to a, a, a real significant cultural artifact. This was a main road uh, here for a stagecoach that ran about between 1830 and 1850. And as, this, um, as the stagecoach ran, ran over here, there is a groove carved into this schist here from the iron wheel of the stagecoach. And uh, it's a very significant uh, cultural uh, artifact. And word has it that there's also some other marks on the other entrance off of Harvard Road. Um, but this one here is right by the main entrance. You just walk up, take a right, and there you are. Very significant cultural artifact. Okay, well, just a few feet beyond the stagecoach groove in the rock, we have another significant uh, find here, and that is the American chestnut tree. This is an American chestnut tree. You can see the distinctive leaf. Uh, I remember it because it looks like a, a, a pattern of a wave, if you will. And this American chestnut tree, like most of our American chestnut, has been affected by the blight, the chestnut blight. And I'm not gonna touch it because I've been scolded having done that before. But you can see in this tree, it has the blight. And that's what all these marks are. That's the chestnut blight. And what happens to the American chestnut tree, the sprouts still sprout, and it gets about this big, and then it succumbs to the blight. But um, 
I'm kind of excited that we uh, found that American chestnut tree. Okay, well, a common species of tree that we see around here is the black birch. Uh, most of us are used to seeing white birch, uh, but there is a black birch, and there's also gray birch, and there's yellow birch. There's a lot of birches. But anyway, this is black birch, and uh, it's uh, blackish gray in color. And you'll notice uh, another characteristic, along with the peeling bark, is it has these lenticles that go horizontal. And those aid the biology of the tree, um, uh, allowing it to get nourishment through that. So on Oak Hill, we see a lot of black birch. So keep your eyes peeled for that. OK, so here on this deposit of schist is a spring that provides water for us every springtime and it runs very predictably. I would not advise drinking any water that is not treated, but you'll notice in springtime when you hike through here, water will be coming out of this area here. And that's certainly drainage from the upper reaches of Oak Hill. And one other thing I'd like to mention about this area is we have a lot of mountain laurel, and we're gonna see this as we go through Oak Hill. Very distinctive, beautiful New England uh, uh, plant. So be on the lookout for mountain laurel. Okay, I wanna stop here as we're walking up the trail to make mention that there's several trails that go through Oak Hill. And they're marked uh, in red, blue, and yellow. Now, in the old days when Mark Crory used to be around here, and using this as his stomping grounds, these trails were marked with spray paint, okay? But now, the trails have since been remarked, and they put these very clear metal tags on to indicate the trails. Now, you'll notice this particular trail configuration has two pieces of metal, one above the other. And this, of course, means there's a left turn right up there, and that's why this the one on the left is higher. So let's go. Okay, well, on our way to, this, uh, to Lookout Rock, we took a right to head over towards Tophet's Chasm. And one of the interesting things about Tophet's Chasm that I always enjoy is that it enters a beautiful stand of hemlock tree. And uh, the hemlock is a conifer tree and it has this beautiful wispy nature about it. Um, and it, it's just a beautiful serene place to be. Now something else that we see as we're coming through here is a number of gray birch trees. And this is a dominant species uh, on, on Oak Hill, there's a lot of gray birch. And gray birch, similar to other birches, has this characteristic of peeling bark. And it also has what's called lenticles. And a lot of trees have lenticles, which uh, aid its biology of how it, how it lives and uh, acquires nourishment. But the lenticles on the birch tree are horizontal, and you can see they're very dominant. Okay? And there's a lot of gray birch on uh, Oak Hill, along with hemlock, as we see here, and of course, oak. And American chestnut, don't forget that. So let's continue looking and uh, see what else we find. Okay, well, here I am, not quite in the bottom of Tophet's Chasm, but I'm down fairly far. Now, Tophet's Chasm today is approximately 90 feet, 90 feet deep. At, uh, when it was first made, it was about 120 feet deep. Now, that puts, us, puts it in the class of Niagara Falls, which was about 158 feet. 
uh, in depth. Now the way Tophet's chasm was formed is that when, when the ice was coming down here in the Pleistocene period and it started melting, the walls of the ice were breached. And when those walls were breached, water started rushing over the, uh, the, the side of the ice. And that rushing water carved out Tophet's chasm. And it, uh, it leaves a, um, a beautiful reminder of what was here before us and uh, a beautiful bit of um, ecology here. And we have um, more gray birch down here. Uh, I see some gray birch behind me. Continues with the beautiful stands of uh, hemlock. And um, I think while I have a little breath left in me, I'm going to attempt to walk back up. Okay, well, we just uh, came out of Tophet's chasm. I seem to be breathing all right again, so uh, we thought we'd stop and uh, uh, make mention of a few things. One thing I want to mention here is this is another American chestnut, and this is probably um, 25 feet high, and it doesn't show any signs of blight. Uh, now, I'm sure it will in time, um, but this grew, uh, this is probably about five to eight years growth. So you can see it grows fairly fast. Um, and this is just a shadow of its, uh, of, of its ancestors because the American chestnut, um, when it was really in its heyday on, on the East Coast, would get as wide as 20 feet across. 20 feet across, huge tree, the sequoia of the east. So I'm, um, now that I'm aware of the American chestnut after our previous show, um, I'm kind of taken with the uh, American chestnut. Now, over here, we see a large structure, and this is the water tower, one of the water towers in Littleton. And it also makes sense that we would have a water tower at the highest point in Littleton because we're 508 feet above sea level. So having water stored here, we can, we can make use of the water through gravity. And uh, that's the water tower. Let's continue on to Lookout Rock. Okay, well, another common tree, at least in this area of Oak Hill is beech tree. These are American beech trees. And American beech has a beautiful bark to it and it's a smooth bark, which is a little bit of the curse of the American beech. Because of the smooth bark, people love carving stuff into the trees. And as you can see on this stand of American beech tree, we have uh, a lot of people that have made their mark over the time. Now, um, this is not a practice that's encouraged uh, by anyone to do, but it is interesting to note that when carvings are made, and if we found dates that were 100 years old or 150 years old, we would find that significant, and we would probably put a little history to that. But if we see a date that's within the last year or, to, year or so, those are vandals. So um, these are American beech trees. I wish, wish people wouldn't carve into them, um, but um, they do. Okay, well, you'll notice here we have a sign. Straight ahead takes us to Lookout Rock. Magnificent views, and we're going to be there in a minute. However, the highest point, we would take a right down the trail and go down there. Now, the highest point, there really aren't good views there because of all the trees. However, if you're a peak bagger, like some of us are, uh, particularly in uh, higher, higher points in the uh, White Mountains, you need to go to the highest point and stand on it, okay? So you're not on the highest point when you're on Lookout Rock. The only thing you get from Lookout Rock are beautiful, beautiful views. So let's go to Lookout Rock.
Look at that rock. Well, here we are at our destination, Lookout Rock. It's not the highest point in Littleton, but who cares? Look at the view that we have. We have an expansive view off to the east. We're looking, we could probably see 20, 30 miles. Uh, certainly you can see the fringes of Boston. I can't quite make out the hand. oh, I do. I see out here the Hancock Building and the Prudential Building out over here. So um, my eyes are still working. I feel good about that. I don't need to say much about the view. I think the view really speaks for itself here. We're generally looking over towards the Prouty Estate, which is where we came from. So this is an eastern view. And from Prouty, we were looking northwest and a little bit to the west. Okay, now the rock that we're standing on here, this is granite pegmatite, and this is bedrock. This has been here a long, long time, hundreds of millions of years. Now, one of the significant features about Oak Hill is that this is right on the boundary of a significant fault, which is the Clinton Newberry Fault. And the Clinton Newberry Fault, if you remember from a previous Littleton Rock show, runs from eastern Connecticut up to Newbury, Mass. And it passes right down in front of us on Oak Hill. And this area here is actually a point of contact between two distinct rock types, the granite pegmatite here and a little bit over to my left, we would find what's called Tadmuck Brook Schist. And that's a point of contact that tells geologists and people like me significant things about the geology of the area. Uh, but enough about that for right now, because I think the point is to take in the view. Okay, it's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful view. This makes a great destination of uh, to have a lunch, uh, and uh, it's a great family outing, easy, easy to get to, and um, come on out and enjoy it.